Welcome to this uh, relatively unedited video of uh, a patient with a dysfunctional left maxillary sinus. This patient originally presented with a fungal ball of the maxillary sinus. It had a what was otherwise a well-performed antrostomy and the fungal ball removed, but the sinus had never fully recovered. It was collecting mucus in the floor of the sinus cavity and getting the classic sumping effect that we sometimes see in sinuses that don't regain their mucociliary clearance. So the operation starts by using a curved artery clip to compress the head of the inferior turban up towards the natural os and then with the small iris scissors to release the inferior turban. The inferior turban is just placed out of the way then um, in a vertical position. A needle point diathermy now is going to be used to score out the mucosa that lies over this medial maxillary wall. The first incision, one checks for this soft palate junction, is, is almost at right angles. And this anterior incision then runs at really a 45 degree angle anteriorly. That way it comes underneath the valve um, to the nasolacrimal duct. Raising the mucosa here is very easily done off the floor first, and then the wall itself as a secondary event. Now, if one has already come through all this tissue with the needle diathermy, it should release easily. But you can see here it's not quite cut all the way through, so small irises will be used to excise it. The purpose of raising this mucosa is so that we can really cover any areas in the nose that we're going to remove or drill. And whenever we create raw areas in the nose, we know that those areas, especially when they're in airflow, will take a long time to heal. So covering raw areas is very important. Um, down kerosene can really happen anywhere. As long as some sort of hole is made, straight through biters are then used to remove the wall going posteriorly. I almost always use a drill in these cases, so I'm not too worried about going all the way down to the bottom. I just want to remove the, the part that's easy to remove just with a straight through cut, and then a back biter is used to come back and remove the part of the wall that's been exposed anterior to that down kerosene maneuver. You're then just left with a simple mucosal soup, and like we do in all our surgical techniques, we take that mucosal soup and we use a debrider to remove it and just making sure we really get that all that exposed bone away you can see coming right up to the cut edge of our incision quad cut shaver here does a fantastic job of getting rid of the small bone flakes without having to worry about it getting blocked In, we're taking a biopsy here. This is for the purpose of our histopathology recording. And then we'll come back now and we'll, we'll give it a wash out and we'll go ahead and tidy it up. One of the things we do need to do now is is trim the inferior turbinate that's been placed at a uh, vertical angle. So getting rid of all those little chunks is, is worthwhile. Sometimes it comes cleaner than others. We left this video relatively unedited to show you how relatively straightforward this technique is. The inferior turbinate then is placed um, at right angles across the back wall. And we really want to take it all off except for just the most posterior stump. The posterior stump is used because there is a small vessel in the posterior stump. And we don't want a situation where we're going to have um, uh, a bleeding vessel exposed without soft tissue to remove it. Next here we're going to use a shaver and like I said just really trim that up. Trim it up enough so that we're going to be able to have a small bit of soft tissue to bipolar. There's just a small few vessels in that area. Now, this is the important thing about a maxillary sump surgery in that many of these patients have quite big maxillary sinuses and they have a big floor or the floor of the maxillary sinus comes underneath the nasal cavity itself. And so you can't just lay the flap over now. That, that is not enough. There is a large area here that you'll see in a moment 
that has a whole lot of mucosa underneath the, what we can see now. So this is quite a fair way away from being f finished. And so what we end up doing now is we use a drill and we'll remove that bit of bone. Make sure the irrigation's working. There it's going now. And then we'll, we'll take this bone off. Now doing this anterior limit here first is very important because if you don't remove this, you can't really get your shaft into the rest of the sinus cavity. So we do the bit anterior first. Just means that the rest of our shaft, as we advance our drill, will actually be able to move into the sinus cavity without lifting up because an anterior lip of bone is pushing the shaft of the drill up. So start anteriorly and then move backwards. Obviously the descending palatine nerve and artery are close here. As long as you can see a straight ridge there, you can take it. And you don't have to go right up to it. You can go close to it and then just get a Blakesley forcep and twist off the edge at the end. But look at that. Look how much mucosa now has been exposed underneath that shelf of bone. And it really didn't take long to remove it. And I'll show you here in a moment. Well, this is often the most diseased part of the sinus cavity. This is the sump. And it is the very sump, the, the bottom of the pit, the bottom of the sinus, the most gravity-dependent area where when mucus ciliary failure um, occurs and there's is an inability of mucus to clear from the sinus, this is often where it affects the sinus the most. You get sort of chronic discharge, crusting and secretions just sitting in the floor of the maxillary sinus. So when it hangs over here, you know, into the nasal wall itself, we'll often just free it up and just get rid of it because we're going to lay our mucosa that we've raised previously over this area. So you can see there just with a ball probe raising it up, you can see it's very thickened and chunky. And there you go. And then maybe just come back in with a uh, curve sucker. We can tidy it up. Take it right down so we can see the floor of the sinus cavity. And you can even remove the, the mucosa from the floor and just obliterate the floor if, if it's very, very deep. But in this case, I think it's going to work very well. But look how far across towards the midline the maxillary sinus actually becomes um, compared to what we first saw. And so here now, we're going to lay our flap down. We're just making sure that at least on the on the medial edge that there's it's not obvious large bits of mucosa left behind because when we lay our flap down we want it to sit nicely into that area and if we're lucky we will actually get a bit of fibrosis and this pit will blunt off a little bit and the shallower it becomes the better it is actually for the patient and for the function you know we don't want a big sump or a big pit there but that looks really nice that's a situation in which uh, the mucosa is going to lay down very nicely. We'll give it a wash out here and we're getting close to the end and you can see this whole procedure really took less than 10 minutes um, once you factor in you know preparation and the fact that I've, I've edited out one or two sections where we're, we're preparing the nose. Let's have a look here. There's our, there's our mucosal flap. Now a lot of people ask how do we dress this? It's actually it's not a big operation. Maybe this amount of tissue here is that we manipulate is maybe the size of a 20 cent Australian piece or an American quarter. And so there's our nice, we've got almost mucosa to mucosa apposition, and then we just place some carboxycellulose foam, in this case nasopore, and just putting a bit of foam there, it does a couple of things. It just helps to keep the flap right. And the other thing too is it just covers some of the tissue from the drying effects of the air. You know, we shift 22,000 litres a day every day, and that covers it. Thank you.